Hello YouTube, this is Eric from Bay Fiber Studio and I just picked up this $10 tie-dye kit from the craft store and my goal today is to figure out what sort of wildlife illustration I'm going to make from it. So a little bit different from my traditional illustrations, the subject matter in this one speaks for itself. Uh, but there's the sketch there you see in the top corner of the frame and down below uh, the canvas is the full-size illustration that I worked up or the full-size sketch. And if you're familiar with batik work or you're familiar with my illustrations, the goal here in the beginning is to wax over and protect anything that you want to stay that raw white canvas color in the beginning of the process. So you really kind of work in reverse. And you see I'm using a number of different tools in this part of the process in order to get all the different details, both larger details and really minute details. Uh, feel free to leave a question, drop a comment below if you have any questions about any of the tools that I'm using. I know they're really different from tools that traditional batik artists might be using and certainly different from the tools you'd see uh, traditional painters using as well. But once I've got this all white, I'm ready to mix up the first dye color. And this was a three color kit and the first color was this turquoise color, which I'm pretty sure is the same turquoise that I use in most of my illustrations, but it came in this kit as opposed to the batches of dye that I get. Uh, but the one thing that I'm going to do that you may not have access to is I'm going to add a little bit of soda ash to this container of turquoise. I'm not sure how much soda ash they add to these containers when you get them. And so I just want to make sure that my colors come out as vibrant as possible. So quick tip, if you are using these dye kits for whether it's batik work or tie dye work, uh, put a little bit of warm water in it to start, not all the way up to the top, and give it a good shake to dislodge all the dye bits at the bottom and really uh, saturate the dyes in your container. Then fill it up with some cold water dyes uh, before you are ready to start using it. So use a little bit of warm water first, and then once you're sure that all the dye is dissolved, switch to your cold water. So I do immersion dyeing, and so what I'm doing now is pouring that bottle of dye into a larger container that can hold about six cups worth of batch dye that I'll be using for the first iteration of the dye process. So this color is ready to be applied, but I had a sneaking suspicion that's a little bit too blue for me to start. And I did a little bit of a test on a scrap piece, and this turquoise was just a little bit too vibrant to start this piece off. And so I siphoned off just about 10 or 15% of that dye into a separate container just so that I could bring the value down to a much lighter value. And so now I'm going to fill that container back up to about six cups. And at this point, I'm ready to apply what I hope is a nice robin's egg blue to my piece. And so I've laid it down into my dye tray and I've got my batch of dye that I'm going to pour on here. Now I know this is sideways, so I'm still trying to get the ins and outs of the videography down. So I popped up a, another screen that'll show you the dye process uh, from the right angle here. I hope that's not too confusing. If it is, leave me a comment just so that I can try and improve my, my video skills as I make more of these videos. So this is a low immersion dye that I'm doing which there is plenty of dye soaking top and bottom underneath and on top of the piece, but uh, there's not a lot of excess dye in this piece, which should benefit it in the long run when I'm trying to have this robin's egg blue color be as light as possible. So this piece will soak for an hour or so and then dry for most of the day and then it'll come back. So you see that light blue color did dry nice and lightly like I wanted. So there's not a lot of contrast between that and the whites of the piece, which is good because I don't want a whole lot of contrast right now in the beginning as I build up my values over time. But what I'm going to do now is go back in with this wax and wax over anything that I want to stay that light blue color. Remember, think back, the original turquoise that I mixed up is still sitting waiting to be applied here. And so that'll be the next color that gets applied on top of this uh, robin's egg blue that I've got. So at this stage of the process, you can really start to see what makes everything unique about my illustrations and what really makes everything vibe. And at this point, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, you're interested to see how it turns out and maybe even learn something about the process, uh, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that I can continue to bring more of these videos to YouTube. I've got plenty more to share about my life as a wildlife artist and also the unique processes that I use.
So let's get back and we are ready now to mix up the second batch of dye, which is that full on turquoise color. And since you already saw me mix up that turquoise color in the beginning, I've gone ahead and skipped to the big splash. So you can see just how important it was for me to dilute that color in the beginning and just how vibrant this turquoise still is, despite me siphoning off a little bit of that color uh, way back when. So this is another low immersion dye. So I'm giving it a good judge and, and making sure the dyes all get absorbed in there. Uh, and just like in the last iteration, I'll give it a good soak, let it soak for a few hours and then uh, bring it back out. And from here on out, it is just lather, rinse, repeat. Uh, I'm going to go in and wax over everything. I want to stay that turquoise color. This is where it gets tricky. You got to be careful in overloading one color versus uh, underloading one color and making sure you balance out your values really carefully from the beginning, which for me is just something that comes from time and experience. But when you're in the middle ranges, the middle values of your piece, uh, it's important to take a step back and check them out. And now that I've got all the turquoises protected, I'm ready to go to this navy blue color that came in the kit. So this is the second bottle, uh, but the third iteration of the dye process. And so I'll put a little warm water in to start, just like with the turquoise color, and then just give it a good shake. Uh, this time, I think I put the soda ash in once I mixed it into the batch of dye. So once those six cups were mixed up, I put the soda ash in there, but the exact same process. Um, just different steps or just different uh, order of steps, I guess. So I'm hoping that this was a real navy blue. I've never used these colors before, uh, but we'll see how it turns out when it gets applied to the turquoise color underneath of it. And so I'll lay that down in the tray just like normal and get that navy blue or hopefully navy blue color at full strength. And I'll do that splash thing again and get the blue worked in there. Uh, another low immersion dye. Just the right amount that'll get worked in top to bottom on both sides. Uh, I was a little surprised with this color. I thought it would be a lot darker when it dried than it ended up being, especially after, after it had soaked for a number of hours. But I think there might have been a problem with the temperature when I did this dye because it really just came out to more of a medium blue, um, which is okay, but just not what I expected. It'll actually work out better in the long run because the next color that I'm going to be using is a green color. And I'll get to why that is in just a second. But for now, I'm just going to finish waxing over the rest of this blue in the wolf's body. And I'm also going to flip the wolf over. I haven't flipped it over at all yet. Um, but when I'm getting closer to the end of a piece, I want to make sure that I've got good wax penetration on both the front and the back side of the piece. Uh, the, the canvas does have a little bit of a thickness to it. So there are some differences on the front side versus the back side. But once I get both sides waxed over here at the end, then I'm ready to go to that final color that came in my tie dye kit, which was that green color. So this is the tricky part, because normally when I'm going from a blue to a green, I wouldn't use a green dye at all. I wouldn't use a green pigment. I would use a yellow pigment. If you've done any color theory in the past, uh, we all know that blue and yellow make green. But when we're mixing green, especially when we're using dye pigments, you really need very little blue pigment in order to make the green color that you're looking for. And so I wasn't sure in this bottle of dye, this pre-mixed bottle, how much blue pigment versus how much yellow pigment was actually in there. But for the sake of the experiment of using the kit, I went ahead and used it anyways. And here we are doing the pour to see how that splash is gonna turn out. So this is the third color. From here on out, this piece will soak and dry and I'm ready to move it into the cleanup phase which I'm prepping for now, uh, and which is a pretty intense part of the process. I'm not gonna get too much into that because I'm really focused one on uh, using this dye kit and also because there's so many different safety things to talk about when you're cleaning up your wax. I'm just not gonna get into that in this video. But if you do have questions about it, feel free to send me a message or drop a comment below uh, as you check out the final piece, the final white wolf. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I think it really vibes like most of my pieces do. A lot of bright colors and a lot of contrast as well. Uh, I've never done anything uh, close to uh, this sort of subject matter before, uh, but it's, it's, it's really speaking to me. So maybe it's my new spirit animal. 
uh, thinking back to the three color tie dye kit and how much mileage I was able to get out of it, I'm definitely pretty impressed. I would say that if I was to add in a fourth color, I probably would add in a black on top of this in order to just really punch up the contrast to another level. But uh, for what it's worth, all puns intended, I was pretty impressed with what I was able to get out of it. I hope you enjoyed watching. Leave me any comments or questions you might have, and I hope you subscribe to see more of my process.